This is the Casual Nerds Podcast with Eri and Matt. Hello, welcome to Casual Nerds, a podcast for casual fans. My name is Eri, and with me is... Mega DJ Matt. And happy Pride Month! As we're recording Ooh. this, it's now June, but I assume that the moment this episode comes out, it's going to be the end of June. But don't you worry, because it's not over yet. Apparently, Pride Month is going to be happening in July in the UK, possibly, because I know they did that last year. And in Iceland, they're going to be celebrating their Pride Month in August. So, if you're from Iceland, happy Hinsin Dagar! I hope I pronounced that right because I am still learning how to speak Icelandic. Hey. But anywho, happy Pride Month to everyone. We just want to let you guys know that here at Casual Nerds, it's all accepting, no hate speech, and we welcome everyone from anywhere, no matter who you are, where, where you come from, your skin color, your sexuality, or any other, we welcome you. It's a safe zone. Nothing to fear. Exactly. So, the reason why we mentioned Pride Month is because today's episode of Casual Nerds is literally about Pride Month, about the LGBTQ plus community and our experiences and knowledge about it. And the reason why I say this is because Matt and I are both in the LGBT spectrum in the community. This is correct. So, yeah. Um... For those who are unaware, I am demisexual, so I'm around. I mean, floating around the asexual spectrum. And Matt, if you're comfortable, are you willing to share? I mean, you don't have to. I know I don't have to, but I am bisexual, and yeah, I go both ways. And meanwhile, I'm my heart and body is locked unless I give someone the damn key. So, this is awkward. <laughs> A uh, little bit. I mean, I don't honestly know much about demisexuals. No offense. That's okay. I mean, not many people know. Everyone just knows asexual. But all you have to know is that demisexual is just within the spectrum of asexuality. Uh, not many people know what asexual is either, so... Oh yeah, before we, re- we recorded this podcast, I just learned that... Matt didn't know that the A in LGBTQA means asexual. What did you think the A stand for? I honestly had no idea. I never looked into it, and I just thought, like, uh, okay, it's just another thing that's there. It's okay. I mean, the point of this podcast is to educate and share our experiences. So hopefully we get to learn something. Hopefully we get to share opinions. And like I said, it's there's no hate speech here. We just want to share our stories and what we know. And if we get something wrong, we will admit our mistakes that we may have we didn't know. We're all learning here. We're all learning. Exactly. So if we get something wrong, feel free to correct. So, let's start, shall we? All right. Okay, so Matt Have you came out to anyone about your bisexuality? Like, friends or anyone or family? Um, very, very few of them. Uh, there's very few people in my family that know I'm bi. I would say about maybe three total. Um, as for friends, there's a lot of, a lot of my friends know They don't really, like, judge me. They don't care. They're just like, hey, if you're happy, you're happy. That's all that matters. Did anyone say something around the lines of bisexual isn't real or are you hitting on me or something like that? Um, hmm. when my, I'll just say one of my sisters, I won't say who, um, found out it was because uh this was a couple of years ago i was sharing something on i believe facebook and it was like pro lgbt lgbtqa pride and stuff and she got angry she's like uh why are you sharing this you shouldn't be sharing this and i was like well you see i'm bi she's like i thought only women were allowed to be gay and i, I literally stopped and like wait allowed what and um she got angry and i was like yeah i'm bi i like guys i like women 
She's like, well, you don't have to be gay. And I was like, I know I don't have to be, but I choose to be. And she's like, well, you know, if you ever want to not be, and I knew where she was going with this, she was going to say something like, actually, I believe she did at the time. Uh, she was saying, um, like, you can always go to church and change your ways. And I was like, no, thank you. I'm good. And she doesn't really talk to me anymore after that. Anytime I post anything, you know, LGBT related, um, there's been a few times she'll just like angry react to it or she'll try to say something about it. But I always stop her or, you know, one of my friends will stop her and not in like a mean way. It's just kind of like, you know, why are you throwing so much hate towards me? Why are you trying to stop me from being who I am type of thing. And then people back me up and she just kind of goes completely quiet. So that's like the major when it comes to like negativity towards when I was coming out. Um, Oh snap. My dad knows. And uh, that was a weird way he learned and it wasn't through me. It was someone I used to know. And um, they were angry at each other. I can't remember why. And um, she just kind of flat out told him, like, well, you're the reason why your son is bi. And I was like, uh, thanks for throwing me under the bus here. I wasn't really planning to, uh, you know, tell him. Weird thing. He said he knew. I don't, he won't reveal how he knew, but he said he knew. And his only words were just like, well, be careful. I asked him what that means. He's like, you know what? Just be careful. And it was just like, that was the end of it. And he has never brought it up since. Huh. So like when it comes to like a negative patch, when it comes to family, um, yeah, those are the only two. And yeah, everyone else that knows of my family, um, the like other two people, they're accepting of it. They don't care. In fact, uh, yeah, they just don't care. They accept me for who I am. For me, um, I first found out about me being demisexual in between finishing high school to first year university. I came out to to my entire family on Facebook Messenger and my mom was panicking. My dad was both okay with it, but then he also said, go talk to a priest, a Filipino priest in the Philippines. But then eventually they start to realize, oh, it's a thing. Oh, it's not fake. Oh, it's not me seeking attention. And here's the thing, in my entire family, only like out of like in my mom's side at least, only um are only like two of us there's two people in my family including me who is in the spectrum and i was the first one who came out saying that i'm in the asexual spectrum and i had to explain it to them and they thought i was making it up the only time the they start to realize it's legit is when i came out on national radio by accident i didn't mean to but it happened and then that's when my folks be like, oh, this is not bullshit. This is like, this is real. This is, this, she's not lying. Which is odd because it took them like three years for them to realize that it was real. I mean, I'm not hitting my parents, but I understand that they might be confused or something. So there's that. Um, I told my friends about it first. I told a few of my online friends and they were like so supportive, especially since some of them are in the LBGB. TQ community but then came my high school friends um all of them were cool with it like they were all saying yay congratulations i hope you discover yourself hope you like answer it answers your questions even my aunt said when i came out to everyone on facebook hope this answers some questions just note that your cousins will still joke around you like they'll make jokes about it but don't take it personally because they're all like that and i'm like yeah i can't wait for that but out of all my friends in high school who know me and knows how, knows like who I confide with and everything, there's one who hated it. Like he was so upset and he was my ex-best friend. I used 
to have a crush on him and he used to like me but then every since I left high school and then I started discovering stuff and I started changing my personality and when he found out that I'm in the asexual spectrum he started getting upset he was like what does this mean about us what does this mean does this mean you don't like me anymore and then oh my god I can it's so bad it's like he's so mad for the fact that I told him hey I'm just letting you know um I just realized that I'm not this. It doesn't mean anything. I'm still me. It just means that I will have a hard time liking other people unless we're really, really close and emotional bonds and stuff. And here's the thing. He's my best friend. So I was hoping he would understand. He knows I like him. I still liked him at the time. But then the moment he started being so mad, that's when I realized this is not going to work out anymore. This is, it's a disaster. And that's where the snowball of of our friendship disintegrating. It's not because he was possessive. Well, that was a case. There was cases of that and whatever. It's just the fact that I was changing and discovering stuff about myself and discovering new interests. That's what ticked him off. And the fact that I told him, hey, I am here. This is who I am. I just realized. He just, it's like he hated it so much. Like, he hated that his best friend was changing. So yeah, fun. But literally, a lot of people took it really well. Even my university, when I announced on national radio, they asked me about it. And I had to explain to them, Okay, so here's the story about what happened on that radio show. And then they're like, oh, Okay, good for you. Glad you were able to share your story. And I'm like, yeah. Which now leads to this, like... When someone we know really close, right, who who we thought would be understanding about all of this, but then realize that they're mad, does it hurt knowing that the people you thought were close and who you know you could trust decides to hate on you because of when you come out? Does that hurt? Um, well, when it came to that, I didn't... I, did I ever really get anyone that... I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't believe anyone really got mad at me there were some people that were just like oh well you know you're not really bi you're just saying that because it's trendy oh no oh my god i remember that i remember in like 2016 someone posted like someone wrote an article saying more people are bi and it's because it's trendy and all my friends who are bisexual be like what the f i don't remember ever being trendy at least not to my memory. Uh, but anyway. No, it's just people who assumed it's becoming trendy because everyone is coming out left and right. Yeah. Actually, I have a religious friend who still thinks that. Um, anyway. I don't think I really had any hate. Except for the fact that, uh, you know, like I was saying, people were just like, oh, you're just saying that because it's trendy. And I was like, well, it's trendy. I don't remember it being trendy. Even at the time when, you know, a lot of people were coming out left and right, I still didn't really take that as a reason to say anything like that. Because, you know, if I didn't feel it, then I'm not going to say anything. Um, and I'm still like that. And... I don't know. Just, I can't remember any hate. No hate towards me, personally, no. Not that I remember, anyway. Well, for me, I understand. Like, when people are coming out left and right, when I decide to come out or tell my family, um, they thought I was seeking attention because I have no idea why they thought of that. They just thought I'm just lonely. But no, I was just figuring stuff out. It answered a lot of questions. I'm glad that they un it took them a while for them to understand. And I mean, a while, it meant that means until 2018 because i swear to god after that radio show my mom and i decided to talk a bit and i told my mom mom we wouldn't be in this situation if this wasn't real or if this didn't happen so yeah and for my friends i'm so glad they were accepting except for that one guy but it did hurt when that my ex-best friend decided to hate me and added to the list of reasons why he hates me like the last time we met, he was so upset that I asked him what's going on. He won't say. Then suddenly when I arrived home, he gave a long 
two paragraph text message on why he hates me and one of them is because you're demisexual you're demiromantic and I'm like what he just hated that he just hated the idea of me being that he wanted me to be the same girl that he fell in love with the same perfect girl who who was so lonely who was so weak who who was a giant weeb or something and I'm like Dude, I want to have my own thoughts and interests. I want to s discover new things. I want to be happy. I want to be free like a bird. You only fly I away. I want to figure out stuff on my own. Not like running away, like finding new interests. Because high school was so, con so, so confining that the moment I left, that's when I was able to spread my wings and fly. And that's saying something because I am not happy with my experiences in high school. Neither was I. So, yeah... I guess he didn't know that I could be a different person. I don't think it grasped his mind at the time that, bam, that's, it hurt. It was upsetting. But then later on, I learned that I don't need that in my life. I, I don't need that negativity. If there's this, if I have a friend who hates me because I decide to do different things, I decide to be my own person. What's the point of having them in my life? Which is really, really odd because... Not because I want to cut people off. It's just because I didn't know this. And there were so many red flags when we were I was still in high school. And all of my friends knew. All of my acquaintances and classmates knew. Like, they see us together. And then they will notice so many red flags. And they tried to warn me. And I wouldn't know this. It was only the time I'm in university. And I'm like... I'm telling them what's going on. And they're like... Ari, we told you so. We've been trying to warn you. But then again, they're happy that I was able to escape that toxic environment so fun good good always good to escape the tox toxic environments yeah and just saying it's never too late i mean yes it won't be easy especially in certain situations like now because we're still in the middle of a pandemic it's something it's not safe to go out and sometimes and since a lot of us lost our jobs finding employment to find a place to live on our own may be hard so it might not be easy to le leave a toxic environment, especially with toxic family members who won't accept you, but you will escape. And it may take a while, but you will leave. It is possible to leave a toxic environment, toxic people, to cut ties. Just hang in there. That's all I could say. And it, it you don't have to stay. You can leave. It will be hard. I'll tell you that, but... It's really freeing. Exactly. Especially if uh, your toxic environment is where you live. My best advice is to, especially when you can, I know, like Ari said, we're in a pandemic. It's hard to find jobs and all that. But when you can, find a job, save up money. If you have to, try to find some people you can, you know, become roommates with. Um... And just save up. Don't don't go out spending money on things you don't need. Only get things you need. But until then, until you can escape for that, please, 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 please save up. Do what you can to leave it because you will feel a lot better. You'll be way better off. You'll be a lot less stressed. You'll be a lot, you know, you'll just be in a better mindset. You'll be in a better environment and you know, you got to look out for you. I know maybe even if there's some people, you know, that live around you, you want to look after them. But trust me, there are times when you have to do what is right for you. You got to escape what is, you know, causing you a lot of problems, causing you a lot of trouble. Could be mentally, could be physically. You know, sometimes those mental problems can actually affect you physically to the point where you're depressed, um... You know, you don't eat as much, and that could be really damaging towards you. And yes, this still relates to what we're talking about, because uh, I can relate to that. Everything I'm saying, I've experienced in one way or another. And once I found the right people, once I found the right place to live, it's been so freeing, especially the people I live with right now. Uh... They pretty much know I'm bi, and they do not care. Especially since, I'm not going to name names, of course, but some of them are not straight as well. So, 
you know, it's just kind of like a whatever type of situation. Um, but yeah, when you can, please try to find a way out of your toxic environment. I have no other words, and I'll just say, same with same what Matt said. He said it perfectly. So, what is our basic understanding of the LGBTQ plus community? Like, how were we first introduced to it? What do you think the community is like? What, what, what is like our understanding of it? Like, to for to share to the other people who have no idea what this. How would we describe it or how would we explain what it is and how it's not a bad thing, it's it's a good thing. It's not something that it's that's it's not something worth hating. It's something worth loving and accepting. You, as long as you accept and love the person, it doesn't change anything about them. It's just they prefer to like guys or they prefer to like girls or both or what's somewhere in between. So yeah, what is our basic understanding if we were to explain it to those who have no idea what it is? Well, um, one way I would explain it is, uh, well, it's all about love and acceptance for one, um, not to judge others for who they decide to love, um, not to judge anybody even if they are straight, which... Believe it or not, I've seen some people in our community do that. Like, you know, they'll try to say, like, all straight people are bad, which they're not. They're people just like us. And um, I really think that should stop because if we want to be accepted, we shouldn't judge others that are not part of us. Um, some of them are even allies. And, uh, you know, just... Just, you know, be accepting of who people are. Don't put them down. Don't, you know, throw hate towards them just because of who they decide to love. Uh, whether it be, like Ari said, a man loving another man or a woman loving another woman or somewhere in between. I think we should just be accepting of all people, you know, whether it be doesn't matter about their race, doesn't matter about, you know, whatever they decide to do. Um, just be accepting, and as long as it's not, of course, dangerous or hateful or anything like that or illegal, um, yeah, that's, uh, like one of my main understandings. Harry? Yeah, I agree. It's, like, I remember during the plebiscite in Australia, I would see people be like, mm, it's okay to vote no and then i remember reading a few articles about people who are in the lbg lgbt who are telling australians vote no for some reason and it yeah i don't think there should be any hate and you mentioned something about people within the lgbt who are like against lgbt for some reason like just recently I learned that there is a group called Gays for Trump and the reason why I found out about that is because um, Trump is trying to like remove, trying to make it harder for people in the LGBT community to be able to get healthcare, especially now in the middle of a pandemic, but it's on the works according to what I'm reading. So I am... I'm not mad, but I'm concerned and confused and questioning why they're agreeing to this, but it's their political opinion, so I cannot judge too much. I have my own, and I hope that they won't attack me for having my own views, and at, and I would treat them the same. They, don't, I, they won't attack me, I don't attack you. But then again, I just wonder about people claiming the LGBTQ, and I've seen and heard stuff about this, like bi erasure and people saying that people who are bisexual isn't LGBT or people who are in the asexual spectrum isn't LGBT and I'm just questioning about that like why don't they think it's real like why did they think it's not part of it um well some people still don't think it's real like we were saying earlier some people think it's still a mental disease some people still try to get 
um, people who are gay or bi or, you know, whatever, or lesbian, uh, to, uh, what are those things called? Correctional camps or something? Conversional therapy or something? Yeah, yeah. Conversional therapy, which I heard is very dangerous. And It is. Uh, you know, I heard certain corporations support that, like uh, Chick-fil-A, um, which is why I do not eat there anymore. I used to before I knew that. Um which I really wish they didn't because I'm not going to lie. They have good food. Don't like what their corporation represents, but I like their food. Just won't eat there anymore. Anyway. Um, but yeah, that's one of the reasons why I think they support that and why they don't think that's real because they, there's still a lot of people out there that think being gay or bi or trans or whatever is still a mental illness and they want to try to find a way to correct it and fix it as some people would put it and yeah that's my yeah, thoughts but yeah but here's the thing it's people within the community like there are people who are in the lbg lb uh, i can't say it. it's like really i just woke up so my no, I, no tongue worry. twisters are hard for me and saying complicated words lgbt like people in the community think that bisexuals aren't a thing like bi is a thing within the community and apparently there was a war before on the existence of pansexuality which i am wondering why so and then just last year there were people saying that demisexuals aren't real and that we just made it up and it's just a way for straight people to be part of the community or something and i'm just like what and i can give a bunch of explanations to why that's not the case, but yeah, despite we have people from the outside who who are like against, and then we have people within the community who are against some people for some reason. Hmm. I don't know why, maybe it's lack of understanding or l lack of education. Maybe they have their own views on how the LGBT community should be like or whatever. I don't know. I, but I'm just shocked and confused and questioning why do they think like that? Aren't we supposed to be all accepting with each other, but will not allow certain people within parts of the spectrum to be part of it? I think one of the reasons why they're not, even people within our community is not accepting of, you know, like asexuals and demisexuals and all that, like you were saying, they think it's made up. Which it's not. Um, heck, I've, I've actually known some asexuals before, and then, you know, I got nothing against them. They're pretty cool people. Um, and it could be kind of like how, at least to me, because I didn't hear about, uh, you know, like asexuals and demis and all that until the 2010s. Um,. So, I don't know, people probably may think it could be a Tumblr thing, because Tumblr was known for making up a lot of, you know, different things. You know, that was a meme for a while. I don't know if it still is. Um, where people would just be like, you know, I'm this, I'm that. But when you look into it, it's either a joke or, you know, like a legit joke, not people just thinking it's a joke. But... Some people think, oh, it's a joke. Some people think, oh, these people are just making up stuff. And that could be part of it. And um, also, it could also be that a lot of this stuff, at least from what I understand, like I was saying earlier, did not really pop up until the 2010s, at least that I know of. So people are just like, okay, People are just trying to add on to the LGBT community name because for a long time it was just LGBT, not LGBTQA or as we know it now, LGBTQA+. So that's from what I think. I cannot confirm any of this. I don't know if this is how people actually think. Anything of what I just said, 
but that's what I believe it might be. I remember doing a story for university because it was an assignment about um, the LB- LGBT community, and I had to interview a few people in my university, and they told me that a better term for it is queer. And when Dan is on fire or Dan Howell came out, he said that he prefers the word queer over LGBTQ+. And I understand they want to use that term, and then there are people who don't want to use it because it's it's also considered a slur. But yeah, it's like... I don't know. I know the whole Tumblr thing. Like, I'm aware. I had Tumblr, and I'm aware of the joke about people adding on. But then... I don't know. I'm I'm not a historian about gender studies, but I am aware that but for me at least, if I could word this right, I think it has been there for a long time, but not many people are aware of it. Like I'm aware that learning about LGBT isn't taught a lot in schools, so that's why people will rely on the internet to figure out what it is. And then you hear shocking stuff. Like, people who say that pedophiles should be part of LGBT, who should be part of the gay community. I'm like, no, that's not, no, no. They should not. No, for a million reasons. No. Way yeah. too many. So, yeah, that's Let's not. Let's not go into that. Like, no. Just know, you know, to whoever listening... We do not accept pedophiles of any kind in the LGBT community. LGBT in the media. So we know some gay and lesbian actors, bisexual actors, YouTubers who who came out. What are your thoughts on representation in the media and comparing them to before and now? Like before you don't see that many and then... Apparently, gay characters would be identified as supervillains in video games. But now, if you're like in Netflix or whatever, you there will be lots of actors who will come out as gay, or there'll be like characters who are gay and and stuff like that. So, do you think society is changing on the way they portray people within the spectrum, or is it? Do you think it's the same, or do you think we're improving? Um, when it comes to media, I remember. One of the earliest uh, things I ever saw in the media back in the day. Um, Believe it or not, I didn't understand it at the time until like I researched it it years later when I was looking this up. Um, Do you guys remember an old TV show called Rocco's Modern Life? Oh, I know that show. Isn't that a cartoon in Nickelodeon? Yes. All right. So. Uh, back in the day, uh, all I remember is there was this one scene where Rocco and his friends were talking about things they liked, and Rocco mentioned that he liked rainbows, and I did not understand this because after he said that, you know, everybody got pissed at him, and uh, they started chasing him down, and I'm like, what's wrong with rainbows? Rainbows are awesome. And then years later, I found out that was like an anti-gay joke. And, um, you know, a lot of media at that time was anti-gay or they just kind of described them, you know, like you said, some kind of villain or they were super stereotyped um, as in being like overly flamboyant and all that. And uh, that was my first introduction to it in the media. But... Ever since then, it started to get better. People stopped stereotyping them. They weren't super flamboyant. I think one of the very first shows to actually do that, in that I know of, was the Sarah Silverman Show, which was a show on Comedy Central way back in the 2000s, I believe. And uh, one of the ways they did that, they had like these two gay dudes... Uh, that she was friends with and um, they weren't, you know, flamboyant. They weren't, you know, like, like, you know, hello, you know, that type of thing. Um, They were honestly, until they pointed it out, I had no idea they were gay. I just, 
they were just two, you know, normal dudes hanging out until, um, you know, one episode where she was calling them for some fashion advice. And they're just like, well, yeah, we're gay, but do you really think we know anything about fashion? She's like, no, you guys always look horrible. It was a joke. Obviously, they just, it was kind of like a wink. It wasn't serious. Um, but then I'm like, well, actually, that's really cool to see. Because before that, they were super flamboyant and everything. So to see, you know, two uh, gay guys act, you know, just like average everyday people. Not saying there's not flamboyant people out there, but but you know what I mean, right? You know, not you know stereotypical. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Eh? Like my first introduction to LGBT people in the media is in the Philippines because despite them not having same sex marriage, um, the people who are gay are widely accepted in the Philippines, especially in the media. Like I've seen a few movies where they're in it and. Especially comedy movies, a lot of comedy, and but in the Philippines, especially the way they're portrayed is really flamboyant and like they make it really obvious that they're gay. And I understand why they they want to. It's like guys, you know, these people exist and yada yada yada. And it's a comedy, so they will have to be flamboyant. I don't think they should be, but in a lot of cases, especially now, it's still flamboyant. They act and talk a certain way, especially in these films and stuff, and I have no issue with it. And then the only time I've seen people who are in LGBT or characters who are in the spectrum who don't act flamboyant is, well, the first time I saw it was in Glee. Huh. Out of all the TV shows. Like, it's mostly with Blaine. I mean, Kurt was somewhat flamboyant, but Blaine was, like... It wasn't obvious at first, but then when he said it, it's like, oh, okay. And that's when I learned, because Glee came out when I was still in high school, so I was really young, that they're like us. They're, it's, they're not so different after all. They're, and yeah, it's stuff like that. And Netflix made it, you know, they made it, they have like lots of shows, like 13 Reasons Why, where it's pretty much... They're gay characters, and there's not, and there shouldn't be anything wrong with it. I know there are other Netflix shows that I haven't seen yet. One of them involves an Asian. I forgot the name of that show, but it shows bisexuality, and it was like, yay, lots of representation in today's media now, and in Eurovision. Oh my goodness! Like, there will be singers and performers who are in the community or at least the super fans who are in the community and it's like or maybe i'm not exactly sure because i'm still new to eurovision but it's pretty much a giant welcome fest there are people of race like waving flags in the audience which is which i want to point out that sadly in like 2018 i think china was broadcasting it and had to censor so many things that the EBU was like, okay, you cannot show your vision anymore because of this. Well, they showed the act. They just blurred the flags. Oof. Because so many rainbow flags were waving during that performance. So, yeah. And I remember seeing this meme about China be like, we're a superpower. We can do whatever we want. And then the EBU is like, are you sure? Here's Russia. And then Russia be like, yeah, we are also superpower, but we want Eurovision, so we have to comply. And this is Russia. This is a country which is known to be really homophobic, but then they're okay with the whole Eurovision thing. So it is interesting to see how much has changed, how there will be some stuff in the media. We'll try to keep it the same, but then again, the world is changing. So who knows what will happen in the future. I know cartoons are now showing... LGBTQ characters on camera like Steven Universe where Rebecca Sugar made sure that none of it will be censored that they will do whatever it takes to make sure that not one single bit gets censored especially with the whole Ruby and Sapphire wedding because there were older episodes which were either cut off or censored or edited to be censored stuff like that and Rebecca Sugar made sure that if they tried to cut this off or if they tried to do this and that 
people will lose context to what Steven Universe is about or what's going on. Or certain plot lines will be missing, all that. There's also representation in uh, Adventure Time as well. Oh yeah, Marceline and Princess Bubblegum. Exactly. But here's my theory though. They only accepted those two because Steven Universe did it first and Cartoon Network was like, okay, now let's have let's do it in Adventure Time in the final season where not many people cared. Or it's like, we, people will care, but it's just the final episode, so we won't do much about it. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean... I because same thing happened with, like, Disney, with Gravity Falls. Correct. They only have one... Uh, yeah, so that's... So this is like a theory. I'm not sure if this is true, but... The only reason why they're kind of okay with it now is because of what they what happened in Steven Universe. But that's just my theory. I don't know if if there's more to the story or whatever. Uh wait, 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 wait. Uh when did Steven Universe start again? Like a few this... years after Adventure Time. Really? Yeah. I remember it starting after that. So Steven Universe came out in 2013. Adventure Time came out in 2010 and I know this is because um Rebecca Sugar worked for Adventure Time before she did Steven Universe. Right, right, right. And Gravity Falls came out in come on Google, 2012. Um the only thing that Gravity Falls did was kind of like um Adventure Time even though their uh final episode aired before Adventure Times was uh oh gosh, what was it? Right. They had, like, two cops um, that were always hanging out with each other, declare that they love each other and not as friends, but, you know, as in, like, they're together. They're a couple. And um, that was pretty much it. But if Steven Universe had any influence on Disney to do that, then, uh, hey, I applaud Steven Universe for that because... Um, you know, just like Marceline and Bubblegum in Adventure Time, I always pretty much knew that they were together, but because of reasons, you know, for whatever reason, you know, Cartoon Network and Disney didn't want to say anything about it, but, you know, I'm glad that they are now. I'm glad that there's more representation in cartoons and TV shows for the LGBT community. You know, it's really good time to, you know, for the for shows like that. Um, I really hope that there's more. I heard there's also more in a show called The Loud House. I believe that's what it's called. I don't know that show, man. All I know is, is that like two, uh, one of the main characters' dads are like, like they're a gay couple. Like he has two dads. As far as I know, that's all I know. But I think it's really cool that there's, you know, more positive representation of the community in the media yeah likewise but sadly as we mentioned there will be censorship and i know there will be countries who are against lgbt and will literally execute people if found being gay so what are your thoughts on people fighting for equal rights and do you think that these countries would eventually stop executing people or do you think that the fact that their society is so imbound with religion that that's why they act this way. That's why their laws are like that. Well, see, people in the community have been fighting for their rights to be, you know, seen and heard and accepted for years. Um, I'm not sure how far back it goes. I know it's been for many for a long time. Uh, one of the things that always kind of stop people from even saying anything uh, has been religion um, for religious reasons, especially, uh, you know, I'm not even going to name any, but it has been for religious reasons. And um, people and, you know, like you said, people have died for that, which, you know, for the ones that died for trying to stand up for the community, you know, I hope. Rest in peace, of course. Um, it's just that uh, I I hate the fact that people had to die for that. I wish that wasn't a thing, but unfortunately it is. And, um, you know, a lot of religious people still put us down. They'll still try to do, still try to have us go through conversion therapy. There are some people 
that will say, you know, um, their God spoke to them and said, like, they need to kill any, um, any person that is not straight. You know, they said that because this has been a thing where they said, like, you know, they'll talk to their God in their head or whatever. And they're like, my God told me to murder you. And they'll actually go out and do it because that's what they believe they are supposed to do. Even though I don't think any God would be okay with you going out murdering people. Um, the main place I've heard that from is mostly the Middle East. Um, I heard the Middle East is very homophobic and strongly against anybody who doesn't follow, you know, the, uh, I guess, traditional way of things of, you know, just being a man, a woman, which um, I know there's some people from that area that are trying to change that. In fact, they'll find a way out of the Middle East and they'll come to places like America where they can talk more freely. They're still in danger, but not as much if they were in their home place. So I don't know. It's very, uh, it's very strange, but I'm just glad that there's more people speaking out against it. There's more people protecting those that are your, against people who are trying to kill us off and hopefully one day this will become less and less because you know I, i'd rather not anybody die because of this because it's not worth it it's not worth it i still say speak out about it but at the same time you know don't kill people over it just anybody that is listening don't kill anyone over this it's not worth it just don't do it. Yeah, I agree. Like, I remember reading stuff when I was still learning what Eurovision is about. Um, some countries in Eastern Europe that were hosting Eurovision, they have strict LGBT laws. Some of them involves imprisonment or execution. I, and here's the thing about Eurovision. A lot of the fans are in who are, are gay or lesbian or, like I said, in LGBT. So they had to be really careful especially when walking around since they're not only there for Eurovision, well, they're mostly there for Eurovision, but they might want to sightsee and all that because you're in that country, why not explore? But they, but it's also deemed unsafe. So that was one of the open talking points when it comes to when a country that is so against the gay community are hosting Eurovision. So all they can say is just be careful and just be aware on their loss and whatever. But when your vision happens, that's when they can be free and everything. But when I'm th when I'm hearing stuff about that now, I'm just, just reminding me of a story about people start trying to survive going home from Pride Month in a first world country like America and sometimes Australia. Like people would be out in the streets celebrating rainbow flags, makeup, face paint, all that. But the moment they go home, they have to remove everything just so they don't get attacked in like public transport or when they're walking home. Or that they won't show their parents, hey, I went to Pride Month. So, yeah, it's kind of upsetting to hear that people could die or get hurt just because of who they are. And I know we're on our way to change that. There's been a huge change lately. It took a long time for it to happen, but it did. But hopefully there will become a time where it's all accepting and everything. But if I can go political for just one moment... I feel like America is going the reverse way because of what Donald Trump is planning to do. So, yeah, I am not sure anymore and if we're going to be able to go forward or if we're going to be walking backwards or if any progress will happen anytime soon or it will be so delayed. But all I hope is that it, we will eventually get there. So do I. Um, but with Donald Trump... Especially, you know, me living in America. I see this almost every day. He's basically trying to make America go backwards. Especially with the LGBT community thing. I remember hearing at one point he said he was for it. But I, uh, um, I remember hearing that and I thought, 
you know he's just saying that to get votes, right? And people would deny me of that. He's like, oh no, he's serious, he's serious. He's He'll keep to his word. He's, he's you know, he'll be protective over the LGBT community and all that. And sure enough, he has proven that he is not. He's not for it. He's against it. Um, especially with him cutting off health care, which uh, uh, kind of puts me in worry. Um, especially, not just for me, but for people I know, you know, friends and all that. Um, it's just, I don't like what he's doing, but hopefully one day somebody can come along, you know, in the politics world and change all that. Cause I like to see us move more forward. I hate that we're moving backward and I'm not for it, but you know, hopefully one day things will change for the better. So, how do you want to conclude this podcast? Like, any final words? Um, final words. Well, like I said earlier, if you're stuck in a situation that's toxic, like I said, do what you can to move out of it. Do what you can to get out of it. Save up money. Find people that you can live with that aren't toxic. Just do what you can. Do what's best for you. Um, you know, if you're okay with coming out, if you're safe to come out, then please do. But if you're in a situation where you can't, it's okay not to come out. Look out for yourself first, you know, especially if it's life threatening. I understand that. Just, you know, keep just, I I don't want to say keep quiet, but if you have to, just try not to say anything. Just try to go about your day. I know it is hard. I know it is stressful. But I believe you can do this. You can do this without any harm. And if any harm does come to you, even after, you know, I wish nothing but for the best for you. I hope things get better for you. Because I know what that's like. Uh, just please, please be careful out there. Yeah, and I want to point out that I'm glad that the media is now adding more representation when it comes to portraying LGBTQ characters. I am glad we're now walking that path, but at the same time, I know there are some forms of media that are against doing that. They want to stick to what they know. But at the same time, the world is changing, and hopefully more change will happen soon. I just hope that society will hopefully be accepting and just be welcoming and stuff like that because we were able to do it with women's rights a long time ago why not do it for lgbtq rights as well so yeah hopefully change will happen at some point in the future we may not see it now but hopefully our kids or grandkids if our planet is still alive (laughs) would be there would be alive to see it hopefully it happens i hope it happens so yeah, this is the end of Casual Nerds. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want to hear this or our past episodes, um, it's in Anchor, it's in Spotify, it's on YouTube, it's on Google Podcast. So feel free to listen. And yeah, if you like this episode, feel free to subscribe. Feel free to follow so you get more episodes coming out soon. And yeah, my name is Ari and with me is... Mega DJ Matt. And we'll see you guys next time and happy Pride Month, everyone. Happy Pride Month.